Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel for the updated and hopefully final for now, I have more plans in the future, trailer for my add-on to BD Armory known as PEW, Promethium Experimental Weaponry. However, none of these weapons are experimental except for one, I think. Anyway, going with the full playlist, here we have our air, uh, our surface-to-air missiles. Up first, we have the 9M311. This is a Russian short-range SAM used on the Kashtan CIWS system and various land-based uh, ground-to-air installations. Short, fast, and nimble, this guy is going to ruin your day if you let it hit you. Right next to it, we have its American counterparts, the lovely-looking RAM-116 rolling airframe missile. Rolling airframe means it doesn't actually have a dedicated control surface for yaw. Instead, it rolls the whole thing around the whole missile body so it can turn in that direction. It's very similar to the 9M311, and this is the Block 2 variant. The Block 1 was actually basically a modified Sidewinder, or AM9, for people who want the designation. Heavier and slightly longer that, uh, range and in size than the 9M311, but otherwise a very close parallel, so expect to see these on your NATO warships. Up high, we got a little bit different. We have the 9... 9M, and by the way, most Russian missiles, if they are uh, air to ground, say 9M, don't know why, 9M96E2, and this is the most effective surface-to-air missile system in the world. It has a 90% kill probability against fourth-generation fighters like the F-15 and 16, and even a high a rate of similarness to fourth-gen plus fighters like the F-18 Super Hornet. In fact, it's really only capable of being avoided if you're a stealth aircraft like the F-35 Lightning II or F-22 Raptor. In other words, stay away from this guy. It's fast, and it will kill you. Right next to it, we have a much bigger missile. This one is an American missile known as the... the um, scrolling down on my script. RAM-174 ERAM, and this is a surface... Uh, a ship-based surface-to-air missile used by NATO forces designed to take on aircraft and not missiles, where the most of uh, most of the rest of NATO missiles seem to be designed to take on uh, other missiles, which is, you know, you gotta kill the aircraft, too. And it's very heavy, but has better endurance than the other air systems, for example, ER-3 and the Pac-3, which comes with uh, BD Armory on its own. So be careful. Now I'm gonna actually turn so I can move quicker. Um, next, we are into our air-to-ground missiles. Right here we have... The first on the list, which is the 9M120 Ataka, is a helicopter, helicopter, not helicopter, launched anti-tank missile, older than the Hellfire, but still capable, with a slightly smaller warhead, but a bit longer range because it's lighter. Next to it, we have an ugly missile that actually has a thing on the bottom, but looking at it flat on, you just think it was white. And that's because it's a horrible model, and I'm really embarrassed by it, but we're releasing it anyway. And this is the... KH-35, which is basically a Russian harpoon missile, which is a anti-ship missile. It's actually nicknamed the Harpoonski by NATO forces, and it's actually technically a cruise missile, even though it can be launched from the air and ground. This is the air-launched version, although I think I put enough boost power for it to be launched from the ground. And the whole idea of this is it flies very close to the water, somewhere about 12 meters above on some cases. I mean, the rough sea is probably higher. And it's a pretty heavy, like, 500-pound explosive warhead, so don't let this thing hit you. And it will attack ground targets in this scenario, because we don't really have boats, and the boat parts mod is an update, and I'm sad because I like my carriers. Right next to it, we have the actual American Harpoon missiles. On the left, we have the RGM-84 Harpoon, which is a ground-launched anti-ship missile, usually launched from ships, but can be launched from shore installations. It can also be used to hit land-based targets, and it flies low to the ground, much like the KH-35. Its warhead is four times bigger than the Maverick, so be aware. Right next to it, we have the AGM-84 Harpoon, which is basically the same missile. It's just slightly shorter on the front and should be light, slightly shorter on the back, but I modeled it a bit weird. And basically, this guy is a air-launched version of this missile. Same warhead exactly, actually. It's just a slightly different, slightly more pointy, because I'm stupid, uh, missile. And this guy is usually launched from a P-3 Orion, or I think one can be carried by an F-18 if it doesn't have any other ordnance. And this guy will knock down most ships or ground targets. Once again, it flies like a cruise missile. Much prettier missile model, in my opinion, especially if you get a good angle on it, which I cer certainly can't, because we're using a Kerbal, and this is the KH-29, which is another Russian missile. It's only marginally more accurate than a bomb, so don't expect too much. It's actually fairly inaccurate, but it hits like Molnir. This guy will ruin your day big time, and uh, by I say that, I think it has like a 500 or 800 pound... I, this one is like 250 pounds. This is like 500 pounds of explosives, and here we have this big big old guy, and this is the... This beautiful brute is the 
P800 Onyx, spelled O-N-K-I-S, when translated into the English alphabet, or the Latin alphabet, if you're actually smart. I already know that, which I think I am. Um, it is a Russian supersonic cruise missile, so a bit faster than the two ones used in BD Armory. It's also a bit bigger. It's like 20-something feet long. I mean, you can see my Kerbal next to it. Bill is a bit small compared to this guy. And um, it's designed to defeat systems like the RAM-116, which we saw over there. I mentioned, uh, warning, this guy is hard to launch due to its size. It will break your plane and your ground base and has to be launched from the air because it's really big. Uh, right here, this was in our first release, we have the, our air-to-air -air missiles, actually, these five right here. And we have the AAM-54 Phoenix, which is retired unless you're in Iran, because they use it, and the F-14 Tomcat, which was its sole launch vehicle. It's basically the same missile body as the uh, AAM-4 Falcon missile, uh, which is also the same use for other missiles, such as the Maverick. And it is a very long-range air-to-air missile that flies at about Mach 2.5. I think it actually flies at Mach 3. It flies like it flies about 650 meters per second here, which is about as fast as I could get it to go, so a little over Mach 2. And by get to go, I mean it won't hit its target if it goes any faster. So it's great for those pesky bombers, but because it's slow to turn, so you can hit your bombers, but really be careful trying to take on fighters with this. Taking out the Amazon delivery drones, you're going to need something else, probably this guy. Right next door, we have a unreleased, actually, as of yet, Russian missile, which is kind of a counterpart to this. It's based off the R-33, but this is the R-37. And this guy is a very long-range missile that, once again, hasn't been fielded in combat, but boasts a, boasts a very large warhead, very large range, and it's a very new system, very good guy, and so it's a very big threat. Right next door, we have the... R-77, which is a long-range air-to-air missile, which is you, which is basically, a, it's actually medium-range. It's pretty much the Russian AMRAM, and uh, it's actually probably better than, if not identical to the AMRAM in terms of its actual capabilities. So be careful with it; it will break stuff. And right next door, we have the. The uh, R-60, and this little derpy guy is basically a Russian sidewinder. I was torn between this and the newer R-73 missile, however, I only learned the R-73 existed after I'd already made this model, so the debate was kind of settled for me, because I'm not going to go back. It's fast and spry, but it has a pretty low range, so be aware of it. It's also not the most powerful. This guy, oh boy, you're going to have fun with this one, if it works. I hope it does. I haven't done too much testing. This is the AIM-26 Super Falcon. This guy will ruin anyone's day. It's armed with a W-54 sub-kiloton, so 0.25 kilotons in this case. So 250 tons of TNT. Fission, not, not thermonuclear, it's direct fission. Warhead. This guy's design was designed in the 60s when missiles really didn't work that well in terms of guidance, and they were very expensive. So having one missile that can get roughly around an enemy bomber formation and then destroy the entire thing in one hit was a truly valid tactic. Nowadays, it's kind of outclassed by more modern missiles and has never actually been fired, but, you know, that never stopped us before. I'm going to join you over by the bombs in just a second. Welcome back, guys. I actually just recorded and then failed to record this, and we are doing the bombs. I only have two bombs right now, and they're... They were the biggest pain in the butt of all these things. Missiles, they're easy. Once you set them up properly, nothing to worry about. Bombs, oh my god, don't even get me started I'm trying to express my emotions through camera movements. Basically, right here, we've got one that should look pretty familiar. This is the BLU-82, more commonly known as a daisy cutter, usually with a little MF in front of it and uh, whatever. This is a 6.8 ton or 15,000 pound, and I'm American, so I know it in pounds, and 15,000 is a big number. Uh, so that's 15 U.S. tons, or short tons, I think. And it doesn't actually dig a crater, crater despite having like a one kilometer blast radius, which I think I had to tune down to 500 kilometers in the current version because it just won't work very well. This bomb still doesn't work very well. Bottom releasing it anyway. Please tweak it and try and get it working. And this guy is designed to take on structures and primarily clear jungle back in Vietnam. It's not actually a fuel air bomb as it's sometimes cited as being. And, uh... You know, just don't get in its way. It will ruin your day. This is actually hollow, but it looks flat. No, you can see it's hollow. Anyway, I'm going to join you at the other sled in just a second once I get over there. I'll, I'll just show you. I have to walk over like this because if I go fast forward, these start going down, and then the bomb over there explodes, and then everyone dies. So, you know, just give it a little talk. I might as well just join you. So how's your day going? Pretty good. I only got two days left of school, so I'm psyched. I am a, uh, I'm a senior, so I'm going to be done with high school finally. 
All right, and here we are for the next guy, and oh boy, is this guy big. It's actually shorter than the Onyx, but it weighs, wait for it, 30,000 pounds. That's what I said, 30,000. That's 14 metric tons. This guy's so heavy, even a B-52H can only carry two. That's it, only two at a time. And those planes are designed to carry like 12 proper to uh, nuclear weapons. This guy's heavy, and that shouldn't be black. It should be white, because this is in the thruster, and it's like the old harpoon model. Basically, um, actually, this one only is the only missile I have with text on both sides. My textures are compressed, so they're not amazing. But basically, this is a earth-penetrating weapon, and it's one of the largest conventional explosives of all time. Not by any chance the largest, but very large. And it's designed to penetrate through several meters of reinforced concrete and steel to take out enemy command bunkers. And, uh... It will blow up everything in a fairly small radius, actually. I only have it about 250 meters versus the, I think it should be 1,000, but it might be 500 on the uh, daisy cutter. And the whole idea of this is it does a lot of damage. I think it has a blast power of like 200. So basically anything, structural panels, whatever, in its radius is gone. Just buy. But it, it doesn't have as much radius and weighs 30,000 pounds. So it's kind of hard. You can see it's actually bending this frame, which is like, it is a very strong frame. And uh, I think that's all we have for you guys. This is my final uh, weapons-based release for Promethium Experimental Weaponry, or PEW. Until that is, I get into doing some um, new weapons that are requested by you guys. And I really appreciate the support I've been getting from you guys. Thanks a lot for supporting the mod. Continue to download it. I'm going to keep it updated. If you guys have a bug, tell me right away. Put it in the comments. I'm going to look at some weapon, like armor panels, but... You know, guys, I'm not really that good at this. Look at my textures. I'm not the best. So if you appreciate the work I've done, please, you know, write the thread, whatever. Write the video. I don't care. Just thanks for being there to support me because this has been a learning experience for me. I just learned Blender earlier this month. I learned how to use GIMP properly earlier this month. I used, I just learned Unity earlier this month. I spent all. I spent pretty much all my spare time for a full week just learning to do this. And then after another few weeks... I finally have this release for you guys, and I know it's not the highest quality, but you know what? I'm happy with it. I hope you guys are too. It's been a really fun experience for me, and I'm going to hopefully continue in the future. So thank you all for watching. I'll catch you next time, and, uh, you know, just blow some stuff up for me. See you later.